Hi, this is Tony from FreshCatMushrooms.com and today I wanted to show you a process for cloning mushroom fruit bodies. Now why would anyone want to do this? Well first of all, the forest really is the original source for all commercial mushroom strains. Cloning allows us to take a wild mushroom, copy it in a lab, and eventually save a mushroom strain that we can use for commercial cultivation. Also, by cloning mushrooms with interesting characteristics, you might be able to find unique genetics that cause things like faster colonization times, bigger fruits, or a whole array of other potentially valuable traits. So today, we're not going to be cloning a wild mushroom, we're going to be cloning a cultivated mushroom. But the process is basically the exact same. We're going to take the mushroom fruit body, tear it open, and remove some of the tissue from inside the fruit body and place that on agar. Eventually, the mycelium will start to grow out on the plate and after potentially a few rounds of cleaning up the culture, we're gonna have a copy of that strain to play with and eventually grow out. So this big guy is the mushroom that we're gonna to clone today. It's a king oyster mushroom that's growing on the master's mix, and it's actually quite large. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this mushroom off the block. I definitely let this one grow out a little bit more than when I would usually like to harvest king oysters, but that's okay because we're going to clone it and I'm not going to be eating it anyways. One thing you want to keep in mind is that this mushroom has been exposed to outside air, it's been in the grow room, it's been all over the place, so the outside of it is probably not all that clean. In fact, it's probably covered in contaminants and different spores that might end up on the agar plate. So the very first step is to clean the mushroom off with alcohol. So that's what we're going to do when we get into the lab. Also when you're cloning, it's pretty important to keep the dirtiest things as far downstream as you can. So the agar plate is going to be right up against the laminar flow hood and I'm going to be moving everything behind that. So I'm going to tear the mushroom downstream of the flow, cut a piece of tissue and bring it upstream of the flow onto the agar plate, which will kind of minimize uh, the potential contamination that we might have. So I'm going to go into the lab now and start the clone and I apologize for the audio quality. The laminar flow hood is quite loud. First I'm going to get my agar plate ready and waiting for the mushroom culture just so I'm not fumbling around once I have the mushroom torn open. So this is a plate that I just made yesterday which is why there's some condensation around it still but I'm going to go ahead and remove the parafilm and just set that plate right there and it can sit there and, and stay in the clean stream of the laminar flow hood. So here's the mushroom. I cut off most of the stem. Normally I would just keep the whole fruit body and tear it in half, but since this one is so large, I won't really be able to tear it right in half evenly. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to clean it up. Basically just take a paper towel that's soaked in alcohol and wipe down the outside of the mushroom. Now of course this uh, make the mushroom not edible afterwards. We'll just kind of have to sacrifice it for the cloning process. Wiping it down with alcohol should significantly reduce the uh, amount of contamination on the outside of the mushroom. So the next thing you want to do is take a scalpel that has been flame sterilized. Go ahead and cool it in the dish. You can then take your mushroom fruit body and tear it open to reveal some of the inside of the fruit. Now you want to make sure you keep the dirtiest things downstream and the cleanest things upstream. So I got the mushroom fruit body downstream in the agar dish. I'm going to go ahead and scrape some of this tissue out from inside of the mushroom. And go ahead and place it on the dish. Now I'm going to repeat that process putting three separate pieces of tissue on each plate and probably do about two or three different plates. Okay, so again I'm going to take the scalpel, it's been flame sterilized, cool it in the dish, and take the mushroom fruit body, tear open a fresh piece, scrape some of the uh, tissue out, Instead of scraping, if you want, you can also go ahead and just cut out a small square of tissue. That works just as well. So now that I got three pieces of tissue on the plate, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the edges. 
reason I like to put three pieces on each plate is just because we're not sure that every one of those tissues is going to grow out mycelium and you might also have some contamination. So putting multiple pieces of tissue on each plate just helps to save agar dishes. So now of course I'm going to label the plate. And now we wait. So that's it, that's the cloning process. Now I have multiple pieces of uh, tissue on multiple plates of agar and I can watch over the next few days as mycelium will start to grow off of those pieces of tissue and work its way across the plate. Now I want to be extra sure that I'm checking for contamination over the next few days and if that is the case I might have to do a number of transfers, probably one or two transfers where you open up the plate, remove a clean piece of mycelium separating from the contamination and putting it on a new plate. And then after a couple of transfers you'll have a pure culture um, that's a perfect copy of the mushroom that you clone. Of course, if you're cloning wild mushrooms, your rates of contamination are likely to be much higher. And it'll probably take a few more transfers to get a pure culture. And even then, you won't be sure how well it's going to grow out or how well it's going to perform until you try to fruit it. So I just want to show you some examples. This is a Trimedi species that I cloned. Um, and as you can see, this was the, the first transfer and it's filled with nothing but pure white mycelium. So in the very first transfer, we got a, a pure culture. I'm going to continue to culture this out um, just to make sure there's no contamination. But there's one example of a clone from a wild species that went really well. Here's another one. This is an agaricus species that I cloned. Uh, and as you can see, mycelium is starting to grow out from the pieces of tissue. Again, it doesn't look like there's any contamination here. But uh, you never know, I'll have to do a few transfers just to make sure I have a pure culture. Now here's one that clearly didn't go well at all. This was some kind of oyster that I was trying to clone. And there is a bunch of stuff going on in this plate. And I would not even want to open this one or try and get any kind of clean mycelium off of this one. This one is just fit for the trash. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tony from FreshCatMushrooms.com and we'll see you next time.